Hello everyone, this is Tyler with Legendary Vegan Art, and today I'm going to be drawing out a portrait um, that I'm going to be making into a full watercolor painting, and I'm going to show you how I do that today. Um, it's going to be a little different than if I were just drawing a straight up uh, graphite portrait, or a portrait for a, uh, that I was going to then go over in some other painting or drawing medium, so be aware of that. Um, this portrait is going to serve just as a guideline, because when you paint over graphite, or in fact when you get graphite lines wet on your paper, um, they're very hard to erase later, and I don't particularly like the look of um, graphite lines under my uh, watercolor painting. I want them to sort of fade out and disappear or be covered by some of the darker colors. So I'm going to be drawing very lightly and very carefully. Um, I'm not going to be drawing a super de detailed portrait, but I'm going to be trying to get most of the important points marked down. Now, I like to use a grid when I uh, size up my portraits, but because I don't want those um, big lines all over the place, because they'll hard to be they'll be hard to erase later. I'm just going to mark um, every three inches on my paper uh, on each side or on each edge rather, and I'm going to use those to sort of mentally extrapolate the grid so that I don't have uh, a whole bunch of lines to erase later. Um, I have a selection of pencils here. I'm using a mechanical pencil now. I'm not sure which one I'll eventually use for the whole drawing. I've got a selection here just to try them all out. Um, and I like to paint portraits of people making unusual expressions, and from that I work, for, work from photographs. And today I'm going to be painting this portrait of a Jared from Hot Pepper Gaming, a pretty great channel where people uh, eat incredibly spicy peppers and then try to give a video game review through the, the tears and the agony, so I hope he enjoys this. Now I've got my picture here, and I have formatted it before um, bringing it here. It's very important to use a picture that's the same aspect ratio as the paper you're going to draw on, uh, or paint on, and that's so you don't have to mentally sort of resize it and mentally crop it and only pay attention to certain areas. This way you, we know all the features in this photo uh, will translate onto this paper exactly. Now because I've drawn this grid here, I beforehand I've gone ahead and um, applied a grid to this in the same way. Um, so these three lines here, two here, three, uh, two here, and three here. So another thing I like to do is elevate my working surface for drawing, because that way um, you don't get any sort of visual distor distortion from uh, looking at the paper at an angle. Normally I do have a uh, drafting table here, but I don't like to pull it up because that sort of messes up my camera situation. The uh, sort of arm that this camera is on would be hitting me in the face if I actually angled the table up, so I'm going to have to make do with these little empty fruit cups I have saved as a sort of impromptu risers, and that should work pretty well. So I think I'm going to start out with this HB pencil. I think it'll be about the the right uh, the right um, hardness, the right darkness. If you use a very light pencil, if you use like a 2H pencil and you have a very sharp tip, you have to be careful not to bear down too hard, especially with a sharp tip, because the, while the lead is lighter, it's lighter because it's harder and it lays down less of the graphite as you draw. And hard lead can actually press a groove into the paper and um, trying to erase the uh, mark out of that depression can be very hard. Also, the depression will permanently mark your paper. You can't really go back from that. So, when I'm drawing out a portrait like this, I like to paint, uh, draw fairly linearly. So I'm marking out here, so between this line and this line, this line of this hair comes about halfway, so I'm going to sort of mentally mark out, you know, this line is coming about halfway, seeing the approximate angle. It's just a little off from uh, being horizontal. I'm going to mark that. And I'm just going to block out very simply where everything should go. Grab my uh, kneaded eraser here. Um, and if this comes out too dark, I think that angle's actually a little bit wrong. I think it's too severe. Um, there's a human tendency to sort of 
exaggerate angles and curves. And once you're aware of that, you can sort of counteract it a bit. But it's something you're always going to be working around. Let's try and mark out some more major uh, areas here. So this comes here, about here. There's another line of this shirt coming about like that. Uh, let's see. I'm going to find his chin about here, so that's maybe a little more than halfway down. One halfway. Just about in the middle. Exact. And again, we can refine this more later. I'm not worried too much about the exact locations of everything. You know, I think this one might actually be too dark. I hope it shows up well on camera. Well, that's okay. But... I'd be pretty worried. If I did this whole thing and you couldn't see it, that would be no good. So we're going to mark out the general location of the face. It's going to come in a little more. Yeah, that's good. Now, some people like to use a grid very extensively. They'll uh, draw lines across the whole paper, and they'll also draw them much more, um, more frequently. So they might have, instead of two here, they might have six or more. So they can really um, get an accurate reading on where every important line falls. Um, and there's nothing wrong with, do with doing it that way, if that's what you like. And if I weren't watercoloring, I may indeed do something like that. But um, I, I, I like to do these um, this way with a little bit less um, reliance on the grid, just because it forces you to use a little bit more of your own artistic interpretation. Um, there's no reason to sort of badmouth anyone who uses grids or doesn't, or uses straight-up tracing. Um, if you're trying to go for photorealist ac accuracy, you know, hey, go for it. Um, but that's not the specific look that I'm going for. Let's try and get this sideburn in here. That falls probably a little lower, maybe a little thinner. The ear. It's important to get the sort of this little, little bit of the armpit here to show how high his shoulders are shrugging. It's a hard line to say. Shoulders are shrugging. Whoops. But uh, it really expresses a lot of his uh, body language. This is the fun of drawing sort of more unusual expressions. You have to find a lot of weird tricks to get it to read properly. Let's get this line of the shirt here. Again, one of the reasons I try and draw more linearly is because it's much easier to get the sort of the big picture down, the sort of general idea, and see if you've gotten that right before moving on to details. Because if you work on details a lot, but find out that the, the placement is wrong, or the general expression that, you know isn't coming through, then you've sort of wasted some time. Um, also, it helps to counteract the tendency to exaggerate a curve. So if you just break it down to its major linear components, that really... Uh, that's just a tool that helps me most of the time. I know a lot of people hold the pencil very differently than I am. I hold it in pretty much the way you would when you're writing and a lot of people hold their graphite like this, or charcoal, or whatever, or pastels. And I've never quite gotten accustomed to that. And maybe one day I will put in the practice holding a little differently. But, you know, I'm not going to feel like I need to make myself do it if it doesn't feel, uh, it doesn't feel right, it doesn't feel intuitive. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. I also make sure to draw the bunching up of his shirt here. That also helps sort of sell the, uh, the fact that he's raised his arms and making some unusual uh, gestures here. Don't know how important it is to mark down this pocket here. I think that comes a little closer, but might as well mark it while I'm looking at it. All right, let's clean up this uh, jawline here. Move on to some features of the face. So since I've marked this line of the coat pretty accurately, or his shoulder, maybe I should put that just a, just a touch lower. I can use that as a landmark 
to get some other areas, like how the eye falls, the corner of the eye, luckily, falls right on this line. So I can sort of bring that down here, mark where that is. It's pretty light, but I can see it. Let's see, the bottom of the nose falls right on this line, and it also falls about where the this corner of the chin is. Um, so even where there isn't ac actual grid lines explicitly stated, a good thing to use to measure out a portrait is to use either vertical or horizontal lines that you can just sort of hold up a, a straight edge or just sort of imagine wh uh, how things line up, and that helps you sort of landmark things properly. I use them as good guideposts. Let's draw this eye here. This eye is pretty wide. I like to, to uh, try and bring the basic shape of the eye to about two or three lines um, at its simplest um, for the upper and lower eyelid. So for, for this lower eyelid I'm going to have just a straight here and probably a straight here and a little notch for the corner of the eye. This I'm going to have maybe a, a high straight here then a flat and then another angle here. So the other thing you want to do is not go too far in. So this is not very high, far in, maybe a quarter of the way in through these, so let's try and mark that. Also pay atten paying attention to the fact that this corner is lower down than this corner. So with all these things marked down and, you know, carefully noted, the eye sort of uh, falls into place once you know what to look for and what to landmark. We can always refine this a little bit later. Let's see, where did I mark that nose? A light line here, where that's going to fall. And about where this is, we can start drawing this flared sort of nostril that's sort of pulled up quite a lot from the baseline. That also helps sell the expression. It's a lot lower. Draw this uh, line from the from the corner of the nose to the mouth. That also helps um, show the expression properly. Get this uh, dark line, this sort of shadow line on the nose. This isn't exactly accurate. This uh, sort of hard edge here but um, it does sort of delineate where this shadow line falls. A lot of people like to draw a sort of hard edge to the nose for a more cartoony, illustrative look, and it doesn't really work in portraiture, uh, where the subject is usually either straight on or only at a very slight angle. See, this uh, line doesn't quite connect with that last uh, shadow line. Another sort of shadow group, shadow line under here pretty important. And let's try and mark in the shape of the mouth. I'm going to freehand this a little bit because it's not too near to any of the my guidelines. And the mouth's hard to draw because it takes a lot of lines to get all the different parts looking right. And until a lot of them are in place, the whole thing sort of looks wrong or just doesn't look like anything. So. This is one thing where you have to learn patience, and that's been hard for me, certainly. So, let's try and soften that lip a little. Bring this up. Might have to bring this down, because... I think the space between this and this isn't quite as great as I have portrayed it, but it may be a, an error in this line, uh, and not just the, the mouth. Yeah, actually double checking. I brought this far edge of the mouth out too far, so I'm going to erase that and redo it. I don't think I've mentioned it, but I'm drawing on hot press paper. Um, and this is uh, Fabriano Extra White um, hot press watercolor paper. Yeah, that looks better already. And I like this because the smooth surface, that's what hot press means, um, is very easy to draw on and very easy to erase on. 
Um, it's not as sort of challenging as a rough or cold press paper, which is, I guess you could call slightly rough. Let's try and mark in this lower lip. It doesn't look quite right to me. This, this V here with the lower lip is pretty narrow, and I've drawn it sort of wide, so I'll try bringing this in a little. This is where you really have to be subtle. Pay attention to subtle details, and don't be afraid to redraw something a few times if you have to, because it's worth getting right early on. It makes the painting much, much, easy, much, much easier. If you, did, if you did your drawing right, the paint should just fall into place. You want to separate the sort of different tasks of drawing um, or uh, getting values right or applying color. Sort of let them build on each other instead of having to constantly juggle all of them. It's just too much mental strain. Get this line of his teeth. Get this one lower guy. All right. I think I've got this chin a little bit wrong. So let's see where these lines. Yeah, this line's too far out. And, let's see, marking where these lines intersect, this just barely comes out here. And this straight line starts heading upwards, or up here past this guideline, so I'm going to start bringing that upwards line in a little as well. And angles out just a little before the eye. We're going back in. Erase these. It's starting to come together. It's a little, a little spooky, but that's kind of the point. Let's bring out this little sideburn here. It's a little tuft of hair. Don't want to get too carried away with the details, but it's a pretty good time. Sort of softening some of these corners. Get this other eye. He looks a little, a little sad without it. So let's again use that sort of vertical technique. So this corner of this eye falls just a let to the left of where this far, uh, this right nostril flare is. So let's bring that up here. And again, it's also a little lower than this far uh, eye corner. So a little lower than that. A little to the left of this. And tentatively mark where we can put the corner of this eye. This one's a lot more flat across. So I'm just gonna put this one. I don't have too good of a marker. I'm just going to eyeball it, no pun intended. I get about the same width as the other eye. Actually, let me actually uh, get a good read on that. So, this is another thing you can do is just use some careful measuring. Um, see how far this is. This actually doesn't not working too well because how that uh, pencil has a bowed end to it. So let's measure that. It's about yeah. It's about that. I had this a little bit short, so let's mark the corner of the eye a little farther out. Because this one's a little straighter on, this one's at a little bit of an angle. Uh, any, any distortion there making it seem shorter would be very slight, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. Let's draw in a little corner of the eye. And then from there, draw in these lines. And then straight, mostly. And then down. And down. Down. That's pretty good. Yeah. Now let's get this uh, fold of the eye here. And now this one. Let's get these eyebrows in. Those are going to help uh, express emotion uh, very well. So, Jared has these great big dark eyebrows. And let's pay attention to the sort of relative distance. Um, this is pretty much a straight line from this corner to this corner. But we're going to pay attention to the relative distance between um, these and the uh, sort of fold of the eye at the different sections to make sure it, it looks right at each part. So again, using that uh, vertical measuring technique, this starts at about 
the uh, left part of the corner of the eye. So let's start the eyebrow about here. Angle's about this much. And let's bring that out. From there, it angles back down pretty sharply, pretty close to the far edge of the uh, face. Bring this in again just a little. I can clean that up later, but since this is going to be filled in with dark anyway, uh, I'm not too worried about the the exact uh, correctness of this. So this one comes in uh, farther to the left of the corner of the eye, and about on line with the top of the, the arc of this uh, sort of fold, actually. Had the inner part coming up a little too high, so let's carve that down. Start here, and yeah. Presto measure O. We're starting to look like a decent portrait. Not of a man in agony, but you know, whatever. Let's see. The sort of crest of this bottom part falls a little to the right of the crest of this part. It's another nice landmark you can use. Alright. Um shape of the hair is going to be a little different, but I'm going to worry more about filling that in with uh, paint when I get that far. See, I think I've actually brought this sideburn down a little too far now that I noticed that, so... Now there may be times when you realize you've deviated from your lines, um, your measurements, like this, this uh, bottom of the sideburn comes down pretty far on my picture, but it doesn't come down all that far. Well, I guess it does. I'm still looking at it at a bit of an angle, so there's a bit of distortion, so bear with me. I think it still looks okay. I'm going to clean up my lines here. I've made a bit of a mess. And I noticed there's a distinct sort of structure here where this part of the hair comes down to uh, occlude the ear. That just means cover it up. And we've got the line for the ear here, then another bit of hair comes out behind the ear, and that sort of shows that the hair is uh, in front of and behind the ear quite nicely. It sort of places it in space properly. So what I was saying was, if it looks like you've deviated from your lines a little bit, but it still looks good, um, don't worry too much. Like I said, some people are really going for um, photographic accuracy, but uh, just know what your goal is before you start worrying about something going wrong, because if you've still accomplished your goal, hey, no harm, no foul. Let's see, I'm going to have to bring... Actually, I have a nice little tool for this. I have a nice, precise little mechanical eraser. So I've got to get this pretty careful. Still looking around. Um, the bottom of the circle is visible, so I don't want it covered up by the eyelid here. But the top is covered just a little bit. Let's put the uh, pupil in. And leave a little space for this nice catch light, which we'll just draw on top here. It's a nice highlight right there. That really helps an eye look uh, just look a lot better drawing in that little catch light. Another thing you can do is make sure to draw the eyelid on the lower eyelid. Um, you tend to see it on the lower eyelid and specifically the far corner of the lower eyelid. That really helps an eye look more realistically rendered. Because of the angle of the eye, you don't see the eyelid of the upper uh, eyelid um, as clearly, unless uh, they're really looking up. Let's draw eyelashes. But uh, yeah, that lower eyelid um, is just a little thing that can help your eyes look significantly better. Let's see, what else can we put in? Let's get this one. It starts about here. And it goes about here. I'll be careful to get these the same size. This one's also sort of bottom of the circle just resting on this eyelid. Draw another pupil here. Here's another section where great subtlety is called for. Because if you get these just a little off, 
it doesn't look right and people are going to notice. So take whatever time you need to get it right because um, it'll pay off. I'm going to fix this corner of the eye here. I think I made it just a little too big. Especially since there's so much shading here, it seems to make the eye uh, shrink visually a little bit. So I don't want to make him look too, uh, too anime here. Not that he'd mind. Maybe, I don't know. He's a nice guy. All right. Let's draw this sort of dark circle under his eye. <laughs> this video, uh, the video that this picture is from, rather, is one of my favorites. He uh, reviews a game called Citizens of Earth and just has mm, one of the worst reactions on hot pepper gaming history. Not to the game, the game's probably fine. To the pepper and the pepper sauce. The world's hottest hot sauce with ghost peppers or something to that effect. Now, there's a feature I'm trying to get that's again, calls for great subtlety. I think I've overdone. There's a sort of in this line from the corner of the chin to the sort of corner of the cheekbone, which I also have a little too low, just struck me now, that'll help. Um, there's a little bit of a, a, a dip inwards. I think I may have over-exaggerated it. I may just pull that out a little. And this far apex of the cheekbone is above this, whoops, above this nostril flare, so I think I had it too. Uh, too low earlier. Have that depression much more subtle. I think that's better. All right. Actually, let's clean up some more of these lines. Because I've got this uh, bit of this color I can draw in. Got the uh, about there vertically. A bit here. Now, when you're not drawing, you know, really specific facial details, um, you know, you can pick your battles and not worry about the exact accuracy of these. Um, it helps to get them accurate, so you can just use them as land landmarks for everything else. But I mean, it's not like you're drawing an eye or a mouth or something that requires a lot more care and exactitude to convey emotion properly. As long as you get the big picture, it's it'll it'll work out. neck here from under the under the ear. Let's try and get that feature looking looking good. So bottom of the ear, a little higher than halfway through that uh, curve of the nostril here, so I think I had it a little too low. Some people just sketch and sketch and sketch and leave a hole mess of lines in their wake, and I like to work on a pretty clean surface just so I know what, it, what the heck I'm doing. Let's lighten some of these. I don't know what I'm going for here. Oh, all right, I see. Let's bring this curve out a little more. That inner part of the curve it comes all the way down and touches this part of the collar. Don't know how detailed I'm going to get with this, but it's always better to have a little more detail than you need and not have to worry about it. Let's get this other pocket. rid of these uh, little eraser bits. And let's see. Draw this seam here. Let's see. Some more lines radiating out from this armpit where the cloth is bunched up. Let's get this coat pocket. I keep calling it a coat, it's a shirt. Sorry the lines are so light. 
I may have to adjust the video a little to make sure they show up properly, but this is pretty much how I uh, do a drawing for a portrait. Let's get some of his hair in a little better. He looked a little much, with this solid hairdo, he looked a little too much like Duke Togo, which is awesome, but incorrect. Get some of these sort of stray hairs. There's a sort of big, sort of curve shape. Some stray hairs. Alright, a few more here. Again, um, these are just guidelines. I'm probably going to erase these before I properly paint over them. but this helps sort of get the idea right. All right, it's looking pretty good to me. Um, I think this is a little exaggerated here. Let's pull that down a little. Let's see. I'm just gonna mark off the shadow area where it's very dark here, even though there's not a feature that I'm really marking off. Very dark from there to here. I'm probably going to draw the paint, rather, paint the shirt a little more abstractly than the face. Because you don't want, when you're painting a portrait, you don't want any features other than uh, to compete with the face and draw too much attention away from it. I mean, it's a portrait, so let it, let it be about a face. You get that artistic license. You're not a, you know, slave to the photograph. It's, it's, I still don't think I have this quite right. Here's my problem. This chin. Let's get this right, and then moving out from there, I'll get it a little better. So this is still a little closer, and this comes out a little farther. There's another pretty well-defined notch here. It's not just a straight line from here to here. In fact, this this sort of a lost line here. Um, in the far corner, but I may lightly mark something in, just so I know what to paint. I don't like that, actually. Like I said, it's it's okay to keep working on a area, on a section, to make sure it's right. Um, all the extra work you put in now will save you work uh, at the painting phase. Pretty satisfied with how these, how light these lines are. Sometimes I've painted with a bit of a um, darker pencil, and you can just go in with a kneaded eraser and just not even rub, just press and lift, and erase your and lighten your lines very lightly, very carefully. Hey everyone, sorry I actually lost the footage after the last uh, cut in the video, but there wasn't much left to do. I just marked down a few more areas on his shirt and uh, carefully altered the, this chin the line of his jaw a little bit. But here's the finished painting. There was very little lost. Um, all that's really left to do is get rid of these little uh, lines, and I'm just about ready to paint. So I hope you join me in the painting video. It's been a lot of fun drawing this picture. Um, and yeah, I look forward to painting it with you guys. So join me then, and Jared, I hope you forgive me. I love you!